Hey, you hear it all the time in sports. We've got to master the fundamentals. It's all about the fundamentals. Well, guess what? The same is true when it comes to your spiritual life as well. There are fundamentals to spiritual growth. And in this episode, we're going to talk about one key fundamental to your spiritual growth. Hey, welcome to the 5-Minute Bible Study. My name is John Whitaker, and I'm passionate about teaching the Bible and connecting it with life in such a way that can help you grow spiritually. And if that sounds like something you might be looking for, then consider subscribing to this channel, clicking that bell icon so that you never miss an episode. And if you'd like a free a mini course and Bible reading plan on how to read the Bible and really do so in such a way that it can grow your relationship with God, then click the link down in the description below. Here's something you probably already know about spiritual growth. It doesn't happen on accident, right? It's not like you just wake up one morning and all of a sudden you're like Jesus, true? Um, so how can you, how can I, how can we grow spiritually? What are the fundamentals? Well, today I want to look at one key fundamental from one key text of scripture, but to set that up, I, let me begin by telling you a story. It was right after graduate school, and graduate school was just a demanding time. I really didn't do hardly anything except work a part-time job, go to class, and do homework and study for three straight years. I used to be a pretty good athlete. Well, graduate school killed that for me. I was so pathetically out of shape, and so my mind still thought I was a good athlete, but my body was in no way capable of doing that. So right after graduate school, I joined a church softball team. I put myself in center field because I used to be able to cover pretty much the whole outfield. I was, I was quick on my feet and I had a good glove and a good arm. And so there I am in center field. We're playing a game and someone hits a short pop up and I begin running after the ball and I realize, oh man, that ball is going to drop short. I'm going to have to pick up the pace if I'm going to get there. Three, four years ago, piece of cake, not a problem. But now, postgraduate school, here's what happened. I try to downshift to that extra gear so I can pick up the pace and quickly get to that ball. And as I begin to try to run a little bit faster, all of a sudden I start to lose my balance and I start to feel myself falling and I just fall so quickly and so so hard that I don't even get my hands out in front of me. I land clean on my face, literally on my face. I get up, get the ball, throw it in, you know, completely miss it, and um, find out after the fact I have a big old grass stain right on my forehead. That's how hard I hit the ground. Now, three years earlier, routine fly ball for me. I would have just run a little bit faster, got to that ball, caught that ball, uh, you know, and it's an out. But not now. Why? because I was pathetically out of shape. I had sat around for three years and I couldn't hardly do anything anymore when it came to the physical kind of stuff I had been able to do just a few years earlier. And here's the thing, spiritually speaking, oftentimes we want to please Jesus, we want to do what's right, we want to resist temptation, but we're pathetically out of shape. We don't have the spiritual fitness, the spiritual strength to be able to do the things that God has called us to do, to be able to live the life that God has called us to live. And that's the imagery behind the text I want us to look at in this fundamental to spiritual growth. And this text was actually suggested to me by a listener of the show, a guy named Jeremy Wright, uh, just messaged me and said, man, this text has really been on my mind. Maybe it would fit well with your five-minute Bible study. Man, it's a great little passage, 1 Timothy chapter four verses seven and eight. In fact, if you have a passage that you would like me to, to explore on this show, just drop it down in the comments below and let me know. I would love to hear some of the texts you're wrestling with or even texts you have questions about and explore that together with you here on the 5-Minute Bible Study. This passage, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 and 8, has been a passage that I've actually thought about, uh, taught on, used in uh, courses on spiritual growth for years. It's so powerful, so important. Let's read it together. 1 Timothy 4, 7, 8 says this. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. And here's the part I really want us to focus on. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. Now, now, just take a look at what he says. He says, rather train yourself for godliness. Train yourself. Uh, that's a really important word. In fact, just take a, a good close look at this word, the Greek word behind the word train or discipline. Train yourself to be godly is the Greek word gumnazo. Gumnazo. 
Sounds funny, but take a close look at it. What word does it look like? Well, it looks like our word gymnasium, right? Gymnasium, why? Because we get our word gymnasium from this Greek word. In the ancient world, back in Paul's day, in fact, 1 Timothy was written to the city of Ephesus, they had gymnasiums. They had places where they would go and work out, they would box, they would wrestle, they would run, right? Places where they could get in shape. And this word refers to uh, that kind of working out. We're familiar with that, right? We go to the gym, um, you, you lift weights, you you know, you ride the exercise bike, you run on the treadmill, whatever it is, you do the elliptical, the gymnasium. Well, this word is all about that. What Paul is saying is he's saying, you got to get in shape spiritually speaking. Do you want to live a godly life? Do you want to grow spiritually? It doesn't happen on accident. You don't just drift into it. You don't just wake up and one day you're spiritual. It happens by training. In fact, John Ortberg made this line pretty famous when he said, training, not trying, is the way to be like Jesus. Training, not trying. That's a key fundamental for growing spiritually. We have to train ourselves. We have to hit the spiritual gym if we're going to be in shape, spiritually speaking, so that we can actually do what God calls us to do. In fact, Paul says, as this passage goes on, he says, working out physically, going to the gym for physical fitness, that's of some value, right? I mean, it's good to be physically fit. It's good to be healthy, particularly in a world like ours where we're so sedentary and we, we just need to get some movement, some exercise. So bodily discipline, bodily training, going to the gym for physical fitness is of some value, but guess what? Working out spiritually for spiritual fitness, he says, is of even greater value. Why? Because it holds promise both for this life, it's going to make this life work better, and for the life to come. Do you get what he's saying? Like, there's every motivation for you to work out spiritually. There's every motivation for me to work out spiritually. So how do you do that? How do you work out spiritually? Well, you put spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices into place in your life. Exercises for the sake of godliness. Things like reading your Bible consistently. Things like praying consistently. Um, worshiping consistently, going to church and gathering with God's people and fellowshipping with them consistently. Maybe occasionally you fast once a month or uh, however is appropriate. You do a fast as a way to say no to something good, to pursue something better, namely God himself. You put exercises in place, spiritual practices in place to grow spiritually. If you want to become like Jesus, then you need to train yourself to be God. It's not going to happen on accident. It's going to take some spiritual discipline on your part and on my part. So what do you need to do in order to have a workout plan for becoming like Jesus? Don't try to be a hero, right? Don't try to, you know, run a marathon in one day. Don't try to do it all in one night. But what are some exercises you need to put in place that will help you carve out space to engage with God and help you to really train your body to focus on Him and pursue Him? What are some disciplines and spiritual practices that you need to put in place so that you can be spiritually fit so you don't fall flat on your face, spiritually speaking, and come up with a big old grass stain on your forehead? Hey, thanks for joining me on the 5-Minute Bible Study. Once again, if you're new here and you haven't already, then go ahead and click subscribe right up here. And I'll put some other videos up on the screen if you want to check those out as well. God bless you guys, and I will see you soon.